Welcome back to Confessions of a Nashville Songwriter. A lot of things that go into being a songwriter and trying to be a competitive songwriter. One of the things you really need to learn how to do early is to learn how to cuss properly. Because that's a big deal because there's a lot of it that goes on. Um... Now, if you're easily offended, or if you're a Southern Baptist, or a brand of something like that that gets easily offended by crude language, and you want to start a prayer group for me, I appreciate that. But I got all that covered. This is funny. I hope. So you got to know how to cuss if you're going to be a songwriter. So... I got a few, I'll try to get through them in a hurry, uh, things that actually happened to you or things that have actually happened to me. And maybe a proper response or um, suitable, maybe not proper, but suitable for what just happened. So you got a song that you've written and the label tells you your next single, for sure. Your song's the next single. And then two weeks later, you find out the song didn't make the album. So you go from next single to off the album in two weeks. So you get that call. It's like, yeah. Oh, okay. I, all right. I understand. All righty. Yep. I get it. Thanks. Uh, appreciate you listening. You hang up the phone. It's like, son of a bitch. Good Lord. God. How, how can you? How? So that's kind of that one. You hear a new single on the radio and it's thought it's exactly what you thought was a unique title and you wrote it last week. <sighs> Shit. <sighs> you're four hours into a great song and your co-writer says, man, that melody is exactly right on the top of, and they non- name some big, huge hit song. Well, shit. You're right. Son of good. And you start over. Or some people do. Most reputable writers with integrity do. Your single released in the fall is in the top 10 and rising hard and the label pulls it so they can release a new Christmas single. What the freaking, were you kidding me? Oh my gosh. God damn it. Mother, son of a. (sighs) That felt real. Because that's happened to me a couple times, actually. The art, this actually happened. This is true. The artist says, cut your song, and it is on the album. Then it's off the album. Then it's back on the next album. Then it's off the album again. That's two times. And then for the third album in a row, you get the call. Hey, it's on the album for sure, 100%. And then it's off the album. And you've cussed so much the first two times, the third time that happens, you're just like, I don't care. I don't give a rat's ass. I don't care. Whatever. Move on. I'm okay. I'm fine. I'm fine. You're in a co-write. Your publisher booked you with an artist. Up and coming. Maybe well-established. About three hours in, this artist goes, hey, man. Uh, And he looks at you and your co-writer. He goes, who do y'all think might cut this? And you don't say anything out loud, but in your mind, you say, you, you jackass. (sighs) You're booked with a newer female artist. She shows up an hour late wearing sunglasses inside. 
and after shooting down every line you throw out for an hour. Oh, oh gosh, I forgot. I have a two o'clock Instagram shoot. Um, did I mention that? Your co-writer shows up way stoned. I mean, dancing on Jupiter. Hey, man, I've got this title. It's been on my brain. It's been chasing me, man. And, you know, if we get the right vibe, I think it is absolutely right down the middle radio. Yeah, okay. All right, um, what, what you got? Well, let's, let's talk about it and kind of hash it out and let's kaleidoscope rainbows man they're not they're not rainbow rainbows they're like kaleidoscopy kaleidoscope rainbows are you fucking kidding me really <sighs> brian davis this is for you you're in a right, and someone from your publisher's office storms in the room, doesn't knock, almost takes the doors off the hinges and says, dude, your truck is freaking on fire. Now, I didn't cuss this time, but BD did. He was like, that's the coolest shit ever. Let's go see. And you run out of the room and you go see his truck on fire. <laughs> That happened. Oh, that was good. <laughs> uh, you've written with an artist for over a year, almost two years. Hard, writing hard. Newer artists trying to get that single, get it to the radio, get the artist out there. You got some great songs that you love, that the artist loves, that the label loves. You call to check on a song that you want to demo. And the artist has been dropped by the label. Drops means they don't have a job anymore with the label. That one you don't really cuss. You're just like, dude, I'm so freaking sorry. You've worked your butt off and you freaking get dropped. I'm so sorry. You can't really cuss about that one. That's just one of those. <sighs> okay. Um, during a live show, sitting on a stool, three other writers, the, uh, the artist next to you doing his song, tearing it up and your pick slips out of your hand, drops on the floor. You start to lean, you lean and you lean cause you can just about get it and and then you go right over the handlebars, onto the floor, forward roll, never drop your guitar, land on your feet. The artist singing the song never stops. That's when you got to pro up because you've just fallen off your stool, which was the most non-pro move ever. So you shrink back to your seat going, fuck, fuck, son of a fuck, mother, fuck, dumb, dumb ass, dumb, mother. And then you turn around, you sit up and you smile. Did that, don't do that. <laughs> uh, you're playing a songwriter show with Ben Glover, <clears throat> the one from Colorado. And you follow him just after he sang the most ridiculously amazing vocal in the history of singing. And the audience looks over at you like, well, your turn, Hoss. <laughs> and that's when you just swallow hard and say, shit. And you look at Ben, you're like, thanks a lot. Jack Legg, son of a, 
Yeah. You don't want to follow Ben Glover. It's crazy. Amazing. You find out you're part of an award winning song that's rocking it in the charts. You see that in print. And that the song has a video that's released. And then you find out that the print release, that that song was going to be an award-winning next single new song, that that was a misprint and that that was an error and that it's another song. That's a big one. That's when you cuss wrong. You have to say like, son of a damn, freaking hell, mother of Mary, son of a good mother, freaking son of a, what? Why do you do this to me? And then you regain your composure and you realize that it's going to be okay. And that these things happen every day to every writer. And that songs are going to get recorded and they're going to be on the radio and they're going to be hits. And it's all going to be okay. But in the meantime, you got to learn how to cuss right. Because if these things happen and you don't cuss right, you just blow opportunities to grow as a songwriter is the way I look at it. So keep writing songs. Keep on cussing. And let's tear it a new one, as they say, in 2021. I'll see y'all next time on How to Cuss Like a Nashville Songwriter. See ya!